Are we going cliff diving or what? Great. No way. Nope. 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 Yeah, that's what our snow trek has been mostly like. Yeah, it's kind of a little tiny. It's a park trek. No, a park. You aspire to see more spires? I aspire, yeah, for sure. <laughs> In last week's episode, we brought you along the roller coaster Hogback Scenic Drive, which is Route 12 into Escalante, Utah. Oh, wow! It's like driving in the angels thing. You're right. We ended up snatching a beautiful BLM campsite just off the route and stayed here for a few days to soak in the scenery and catch a hike. Boy, did we find a campsite for tonight, or maybe for a couple of days, I don't know. You've really got to see this. Hello. Gary has us going on a nine-ish mile hike through a slot canyon. So we're actually going to walk from where we're staying. This is a bad idea. So which adds another three-ish miles. No, 1.5. Back and forth? Oh, okay, three miles. Three miles. I can math. Okay. That's our lovely camper nestled in here at the site. Beautiful mountains in the background. There are a ton of really cool places to park here overnight on this road. If you're ever in this area, you definitely want a boondocker in this. In this. Yeah, the road's decent. Oh wow. I'll drive by that. <laughs> well, in the future, I'll try to be more observant. This is the beginning of the Bighorn Trail. Okay. All right, well, let's get her going. There's our first cairn. I'm assuming this is the way we go. Hey, let's go through the slot Oh, I cheated. Ooh, that's deep sand. Beautiful colors and all. Although lots of sand. I mean, I can see where people say it gets hot down here. Me, it's a scenery like this. Hopefully we can get around this. Are we going cliff diving or what? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not so sure about this. Well, it's not water, but definitely fallish. Yeah, because this way is not going to work. <laughs> Just a wee bit steep. Remember, don't try this at home, kids. I am a professional. I'm just going to get down low, so if I fall, it won't be far. One step at a time. He's down the waterfall. Yeah, that one. It's a little tall. That is. Do we have a cliff? That's so cool looking. Definitely at the beginnings of the Slot Canyon. Oh. Oh. No way. Nope. 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 Nope.
that's where I was thinking you can go down, but... So the rocks are telling me don't go down that way. Go around. I think I'm going to follow the rocks. The rocks know better. So instead of going in a slot canyon, we get to look at a slot canyon. Well, we can go around. Not if I can't get out. So. <laughs> Details. Before visiting Utah, I had never heard of Biocrest. Biocrest is comprised of many organisms that live on the soil surface in arid locations. It helps to reduce soil erosion for desert plants as well as improve the fertility of the soil. When Biocrest gets wet, they move around and create this stringy, sticky residue that helps to bind the soil together. This keeps soil particles from being blown away in the wind. When they get wet, they also absorb and store water, which helps provide a good environment for other organisms and plants that can also improve the underlying soil. I think this is doable. I don't know if that is. You want to take a peek? Nope. <laughs> this would be called a oh hell no. Holy crap! You need a canyon near that bush. Well, dang. It is kind of cool looking though. It is very cool looking. Yeah, a little beyond our scope. That's a slot canyon. Oh yeah. All we need is some repelling gear and we'd be fine. Mm -hmm. And also to figure out how to use it. I think this is our view. I'm okay with this. It's pretty. It is pretty. It's the same view we had before, but it's still yeah. pretty. It's still pretty. And it's been an interesting hike. On this and several other trails, we saw areas where the biocrust looked black. The color is actually the way it protects itself from being damaged by the harsh UV radiation in the desert. We also learned that the black biocrust can be easily damaged by walking on it. It can take up to 50 years or more to recover from being damaged by vehicles or even your foot. So while you're out hiking next time, especially in more arid areas, take a peek at that soil and watch your step. What if they don't step on it? I mean, I wouldn't step on that, would you? This is a tad warm. Well, we're back at that waterfall. Let's see if climbing up is easier than climbing down. Remember to check your first foot. Every step has to be planted. Yeah, she made it all the way to the top. All right. So it is not my turn to go up this and scale it up, which will be fun. It may not look like much, but I'll tell you what, it is really steep. Catch my breath. Okay. And thank God for these shoes. Solomon's shoes are rocking. I 
All right. Well, that deserves hey, a high five. Woo! Need that booger. Oh, even though we're completely exhausted from this thing, uh, this last hike, almost nine miles. But look at this. Don't park a mile and a half from a trailhead and then think that you're going to walk it and back. Oh. Well, especially since on the way there it was easy, it was all downhill. Yeah. Our next stop is at a private campground called Bryce Canyon RV Resort in Cannonville, Utah. We use this as a home base so we can take our camper off the truck while heading into Bryce. We stayed here for $36 a night with water and electric, which seemed like a luxury to us. The next day, we headed into Bryce for an early hike. We read that the crowds were getting pretty large already, so early is always better. Because of several sections of trails closed, we headed into the visitor center first to confirm our hike plan. Next, we headed to Sunset Point to park. The ranger said since it was early in the day, we should find parking without an issue and not have to wait for the shuttles. You have to walk a half a mile on the rim trail to get to the trailhead near Sunrise Point. That was not as easy as it sounds due to the large amount of snow and ice even on the main walkway. But the views were pretty, even on a cloudy day. Our plan is to begin on the Queen's Garden Trail, continue on the Tropic Trail, hike the Peekaboo Loop, and then head back. A hike of around eight miles and 1,600 feet of elevation gain. This was similar in difficulty to our other hikes, at least on paper, but you'll see soon enough. I don't know, we lost a lot of people. You know, it's a $10,000 find this sled for you. <laughs> Is it? There's no snowboarding or sledding for you, maybe say. So no sledding for no you. No sledding for me. <laughs> well, they certainly do have the views here. And the switchbacks. <laughs> they all look like ants. All righty then. Sweet. It's like being in Hobbit land, but very muddy. So we have to say it's melting a couple of times, and then I have to put Wizard of Oz in there. You cursed brat! Look what you've done! I'm melting! Melting! I'm just saying. Okay. Well, the beginning of the Peekaboo Trail is definitely a different feel than the other ones. A lot harder to walk on. Everybody looks grumpy on this trail. Yeah. A huge steaming ball of foreshadowing. If your post hole in it, yeah, I would be grumpy, but this is, yeah, so, babe, it's a national park. I expect everybody to be grumpy. If you get off the trail, you're going in deep. This is pretty sweet. That one's flipping you the bird, man. Gary sunk in. I've done it twice. He's only done it once. It's a little hiking game. Who can fall in? Oh, I definitely have snow in my socks now. 
This is certainly not an easy trail. My butt and feet are a little soaked right now. It's like a sledding hill without the sled. That's what our snow trek has been mostly like. Yeah, it's kind of a little tiring. It was very tiring. We're playing the game again. The potholes again. Oh. Oh. Okay, just call me Grace. We're on our way back, and the last switch bags. Still pretty, and we're still smiling, even yeah, after that hike. It was pretty brutal. It was brutal. We both agreed that this was the most brutal hike we've been on so far. Post holing multiple times, and sometimes down to our waist for each of us, was quite jarring and our knees took a beating. It was an ibuprofen and asper cream night. And for the next night. And if the hike wasn't rough enough, this There's parking lot practically did me in. So many people just not no, paying no, attention. It was probably good that we didn't stay in the park campground. Yeah. I thought he couldn't see us, because well, I couldn't see him. Behind. It's just nuts. Yeah. She was talking to that older gentleman earlier. She's like, yeah, in the afternoon you want to take the shuttles. Oh, I'm tired. Morning. Good morning. Kind of a late start today, but... And we're at Kodachrome State yeah, Park. Yeah, we're on Grand Parade Trail. We're going to take it easy. The last trail we were on at Bryce was rather difficult with all the snow. I think we're in the low 40s right now. It is chilly. And it's windy as all of it. It's definitely windy too. Not yeah, far enough. You got a big paper thin to go through that one. <laughs> Now we're digging another trail. This is called the Panorama Trail. This is the one we came to go. <laughs> I'm guessing some of the hats have fallen off. It's not a hat shop anymore, it's a hat rack. There's more hands. You aspire to see more spires? I aspire, yeah, sure. <laughs> Look at all those folks up there. Otherwise, it's been really quiet hike. It's a little offshoot of the main trail. But we just walked by a couple that said it was worth worth going. So, so we're going. I guess you can. It's almost 360.
when you threw your hat off. It costs $10 per vehicle to get into the Kodachrome Basin State Park for us out-of-state folks. There are campsites with no hookups for $25 a night and full hookups for $35, so this might be an alternate option if you're in this area. Morning. We are leaving the, I'm going to look at it, the Bryce Canyon RV Resort by Our Journey. We are headed to get this thing washed. That is probably the most important thing. They closed the RV wash today for some reason. I'm guessing maybe because it's 43 degrees outside, but the regular car wash was running. We are bummed. On the plus side, we did get the, at least the truck wash the last time we went through here, but you know, oh well. We leave Bryce and head towards Cedar City. As usual, we're looking for boondocking locations not too far from the city, and we decided to stay near Perowin Gap which is a little north of town and has some petroglyphs that we could view. But as we find out, BLM spots in a mountain area aren't the easiest of options. Oh wow, I didn't, we didn't even see them. Up there? Yeah. That hill is going to be a little challenging, I think. You don't think so? Yeah. Probably should have walked them before I get too far. We're out scoping for a new BLM area, uh, and I think we found it, but we gotta get up this hill. And I'm assuming it's over there somewhere. I was going to scope it, but instead I'm going to watch Gary get up this hill. In these situations, it's better for me to be out of the truck and watching, because I do get paranoid, really paranoid. Piece of cake, right? I know. I know. Not a second there. So, yeah, I know, because we're not. I need to move back some more. I don't know if I keep steamrolling it though, it'll get pretty slow. <laughs> you want to go find some other place? Alright, get in. I don't think you're going to find anything, but we'll, we'll go. I'm just not sure where else to go though. You're gonna we'll go down to, that other road. You're, you're going to have to look on Google Maps and see what's out here. This is also why we try to show up early to BLM areas, since you may not like what you find, and you need time to get to another location. Luckily, we found an okay spot on the other side of the mountain. Thanks again for stopping by, and we hope you come by next week as we head north towards Salt Lake City. See you on the next trail.